Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Crafty and D. Today we're going to be talking about the Advanced Dungeons and Dragons First Edition character creation. Ten quick, easy steps. I know I had a previous video; it was quite long, and but this is going to be just a quick, short, let's do it right now type of video. Players, go ahead, make up a few of these characters, get them ready to go. At least get your stats rolled out. You could have, you know, your some of your details filled in. You could get those filled in, get them into a folder, and then if your character does die, does get dropped to zero hit points, needs to sit out for a couple of weeks, you can easily just grab another one and just start going with it. I mean, having them ready to go speeds up the process, and you know, a bathroom break and you're back in the game. Alright, let's get on with step number one. Step number one of character creation. Print out a new character sheet. Get one ready to go. Just like this here. You could have something like this. Uh, Dragon's Foot's got a bunch of them. Or you could print uh, just something that you find off the internet. A piece of notebook paper works just great. Doesn't have to be anything fancy or special. Just print something out. Have a stack ready to go. Have a notebook ready to go. Have what, however you would normally record them ready to go and just get ready. Well, you need your six ability store, score, strength, intelligence, wisdom, constitution, dexterity, charisma. The rest of it you can kind of figure out as you go, right? All right, step two. Get three or four six-sided dice and roll them. All right, you add the highest numbers together and then write it on your ability slot. Uh, repeat until you have filled in all of the ability slots. Um, if you want to, you can use the three and just use those. If you want to roll four, roll four and drop the lowest. Well, you're adding the three highest numbers no matter which way you're doing it. You want to go hardcore mode or like old school D&D before first edition or talking original edition. You write them down in order that you roll them. You don't move them. Step three. Choose your species or race. Uh, elf, dwarf, human, whatever you're going to be. Uh, this will tell you what classes, your maximum levels you can use. Uh, some species or races will give you extra bonuses and benefits. Humans are considered the default species and receive no extras, but they also have no limits. Step 4. Pick your class that uh, fits in with those scores and the race that you picked out. Uh, if the DM lets you mix things around, you can mix things up a little bit. Uh, but make sure what you pick fits with your character, and don't forget your bonuses if you are taking something that's not a human. Step 5. Uh, make notes of anything you don't want to forget during play. Uh, write it down on your sheet. Um, anything that you might need, like attacks, weapon proficiencies, spells, saves, modifiers, any adjustments, bonuses, anything that you need to write down, write it down on the sheet. You got a good sheet, you'll have spots for everything. Uh, if you're using a notebook paper, just start writing stuff down in a way that makes sense to you. Step six, roll your hit points for your character. Um, your hit dice, you're going to find those in the player's handbook. It's going to tell you the number of dice, the number of sides. It's going to be under your class, so like cleric, you're going to look under cleric, fighter, look under fighter, and I'll tell you right in there how many hit dice, how many sides that you are going to get. Usually it's one per level, and like a cleric is an eight-sider, a fighter is a ten-sider, but go ahead and look it up real quick in the player's handbook. Apply your constitution modifier if you have one, and that's your total hit points. Step seven, pick your alignment. If nothing else, it'll help you interpret how you react in a given situation. Uh, lots of discussion on alignment. Generally speaking, I usually go with chaotic good because generally my character does good stuff. But he might not always follow the rules, but he's not really mean or malicious either. And if you haven't already done so, pick out any spells your character can cast, or anything else that you haven't filled in yet. Step 8, get your gold! Uh, clerics, you get 3d6, fighters get 5d4, magic users get 2d4, thieves get 2d6, and monks get 5d4. See page 35 for the player's handbook for more information on your gold. Step 9. Spend that gold. Uh, like I said, turn to page 35 of your player's handbook and start spending all that beautiful gold. It's gonna filter right through your greedy little hands. You're gonna need weapons, armors, backpacks, torches, food, uh, blankets and boots, and don't forget the chalk. Check out my uh, What Should My Equip My Character Have For Equipment video if you're not sure what to pack. Step 10. 
Give your character a name and get back in the game. You've really wasted a lot of time already, haven't you? After all, your party's counting on you. Your character appears in front of the party. Is it a fighter? Perhaps it's a paladin. How fortunate. Since Zed is dead, this guy looks friendly enough. Maybe you should talk to him. All right. Well, thanks for watching and uh, really appreciate it. Uh, catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.